My next guest, Mark Thiessen, writing this. It used to be uh, you had to win on the state level before taking the national stage. O'Rourke lost his race to unseat Senator Ted Cruz from Texas last year. He got a participation trophy. Apparently, he thinks that qualifies him to be the leader of the free world. And Mark Thiessen joins us now to further make that point. He's a columnist for The Washington Post, a Fox <laughs> News contributor and resident fellow at American Enterprise Institute. Mark, continue. Good to be with you, Sandra. Look, I mean, Beto O'Rourke is a loser. And I don't mean that pejoratively. I mean it literally. He is a, he, he he lost his Senate race. There there was there's always been a tradition that like if you want to go on the national stage, you have to win at the state level first. I mean, even Barack Obama won his won a Senate race before he almost immediately declared for president. Beto hasn't even done that. Um, and, you know, one of the reasons you do that is because, you know, Ronald Reagan won 49 states, but at least Walter Mondale won Minnesota. Beto hasn't even proved he can win but Texas. But that hasn't stopped so, him from ginning know, up a lot of enthusiasm. You see the crowds there in the picture. You saw the dollar amount he raised in the first 24 hours, yeah. over $6 million. Mark. Yeah. There's a lot of energy out there, that, 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 and, and that's nothing to sneeze at. Uh, the Democrats are going to apparently look, may be testing the opposition that, a, uh, that betting on a loser uh, will pay off for them in 2020. All right, and by the way, here are the fundraising numbers. You've got to put them up there because they continue to update. But here's what we've seen so far with O'Rourke's. Uh, O'Rourke raising six, over $6 million in the first 24 hours. Bernie yeah. Sanders, nearly six. Kamala Harris raising $1.5 million. Joe Biden, the Wall Street Journal reporting, he's already on the phone trying to lock in some of those big donors because he's got he's to compete yeah. with this, Mark. He does have to compete with this. And uh, look, there's the, the, the problem that Joe Biden faces is that the center left uh, ideology that he represents is no longer in vogue. Uh, this is the democratic socialism is the new norm in the Democratic Party, and that's where the energy in the Democratic Party is. And so, you know, Democrats want uh, they they want their like handcrafted espresso from a barista, and Joe Biden's kind of taster's choice. <laughs> you know, it's 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 just not it's something that's not selling anymore. And people think he can reassemble the Obama coalition in some way. I don't I don't I don't know that he can. I think the energy is with people like Bernie Sanders and and with Beto O'Rourke. Bernie has a army of supporters from the last election. I think they, they may even correctly assume that if Bernie had not had the, the nomination stolen from him by the superdelegates, that if he had been the nominee, he might have beaten Donald Trump because Trump, the, those Bernie voters in some of those key swing states mm -hmm. gave Donald Trump the margin of victory. The Wall so I think he's the man to beat. The Wall Street Journal in that piece where they, um, they reported that Joe Biden is telling supporters that he does plan that 2020 bid and he's trying to get those big donors lined up. Uh, the Wall Street Journal writes this, Mr. Biden is discussing setting up up an exploratory committee sometime after the Easter holiday. The candidates are due to report their first quarter fundraising totals to the FEC on April 15. By planning to enter the race after the first quarter fundraising deadline, Mr. Biden wouldn't be required to submit a disclosure report in April. I want to move on to some of the big debates that are happening right now and some of the big questions sure. that are being asked of those Democrats uh, that are running for president. One is on the voting age and lowering it. What we're hearing mm -hmm. from some of the candidates, Donna Brazil, a former head of the uh, DNC, she reacted to that. Listen. Would I like to see the, the voting age lowered as several countries, including, I believe, uh, Brazil, a country named after my family, Austria, Brussels, other countries? Yes. And, and Prince George is not Prince George. In Hyattsville, Maryland, as well as uh, Tacoma Park, they're experimenting with this. We need to experiment with more ways to engage young people and to get them more involved in our democratic process. Lower the voting age, uh, abolish the electoral college, we're hearing, pack the Supreme Court. Uh, the president weighed in on a lot of these calls and called, called them strange on the part of Democrats. What do you think? Yeah, well, first of all, lowering the voting age, we've got a millennial generation where you've got 20 year olds who have to take adulting classes to figure out how to fold laundry. Uh, so to lowering the voting age to 16 year olds uh, it seems to be uh, not the smartest move. But look, here's the fascinating thing is that for the last three years, the Democrats have been telling us that Donald Trump is an authoritarian threat to our democracy, that he calls the, the media the uh, enemy of the people and that he's going to undermine our, our, our constitutional system. It's the Democrats who've declared war on the Constitution. They want to change it. They want, they want to get rid of the Electoral College. They want to pack the Supreme Court. They want to get rid of the filibuster in the Senate. Uh, this, these are all the, th these are what, what basically what they're doing is they want to get rid of all the protections that our founding fathers put in the Constitution to prevent a tyranny of the majority. 
That's the reason why we have an electoral college is so that the populous city, you know, back then it was Philadelphia and Boston and uh, that were the and, uh, that were the populous cities that they couldn't, uh, you know, dictate to the smaller rural states. Today, the Democratic Party is basically concentrated in the coastal elites in New York and in and California, and they just derisively want to dictate to the what they call flyover country. Mm. And the the electoral college protects flyover country is to make sure that they can that they have to be. I don't think it will. Well, first of all, they're not going to do it because you need to amend the Constitution, which is incredibly hard to do. They might be able to get rid of the filibuster and the, and packing the courts is easier, but they're not going to get rid of the Electoral College. Right. And nor should we, nor should any Americans want us to get rid of the Electoral College. Our founders set up a, a system for a reason well, because a we don't want to have a, a tyranny of the majority. A lot of these proposals have a lot of people talking about this right now. Mark Thiessen, and you've been <laughs> writing about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Meanwhile, President.